Hey, what's going on premium members? This is Darren Field with Show Express Training. And in this video, I wanted to show you all the new updates inside version 9.2.23. So let's go ahead and get started. So besides minor bug fixes here and there, and the ability to run with Big Sur. So if you're on operating system Big Sur, uh, you should be running smoothly. Uh, let's go over the first update inside the new version. We're gonna look at timeline. Now in previous versions, we've had up to 10 light scene timelines available. Now we have up to 20. So go ahead and click timeline settings, number of light timelines, 10, and we can click 20. And now we have up to 20. Opens up a lot more space uh, to be able to create some cool timeline scenes. All right, next is in, in live. We can ha now have up to 20 tabs instead of 10. So with button settings, we're gonna look here under boards and tabs, and we can have up to 20. So this includes windows or tabs, windows free floating, uh, or tabs within live. So definitely check that out. If you like to up, uh, add more tabs, you now have, to have up to 20. All right, next we're gonna look at sequential list. So this is a cool one. Um, now, if you've used sequential list before, you had to go open, go select your file, open, loads it, runs it, and then go back to open, select your file, run it, and so on. But now they've made it a lot more easier now that you can actually import your sequential list files inside live in a page. So I actually created a free floating page here, sequential cues, and we're gonna have our page sequential list songs. So let's go ahead and add sequential lists to our page here. And now we have them right here, song one, song two. And the moment you click on it, it automatically loads that sequential list inside your sequential list tab over here. So it's a nice little quick shortcut. Now, but we're gonna actually I'm gonna show you some funky things about this and maybe some little bit of workarounds um, and stuff that I've found um, that kind of help. So bear with me, we're just kind of like go through this together and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So, all right, so if you have your, say a free floating window for your sequential list, you go ahead and say, let's select song one, loads it up over here. now. Traditionally, if you load it in your sequential list, you press the space bar. That is your go button, okay? Um, and that is right here. So if you click space bar, and it's going through our scenes. Now, the problem is, is that if you select our song, I'm then you wanna go to the next you know, cue. I'm pressing the space bar currently and nothing's being activated as you can, if you, if you can hear my pressing the space bar. So what you would have to do then is then move over, select the main window for, for live sequential list, and then it activates your go button. So this is kind of a bummer because sometimes, you know, it's basically adding one more step to do in order, in order for it to, to work. Um, so it's like you're there and you're just wanting to go next. You're, now you're like, oh man, now I gotta go over here, activate my window, then I can go and then run my show. I wish you would be able just to activate your show and then it would be able to run from the space bar still with this um, window open and activated instead of having to go over here and activate it. Now, there is a workaround, which is cool. So the workaround is, is MIDI mapping the go button or MIDI mapping a, on, your, on your MIDI board to the go. So sequential list, sequential settings, and you got your go and you just go ahead and mini map that to a button. So I'm gonna go ahead and just so right here. Now I'm pressing my mini button on my APC mini and this is my go button on the board. Now here's the cool thing. So remember, it wasn't working if you selected your song and you can't press space part. But now if you have a MIDI board and you MIDI mapped it, you can have this highlighted and then I'm gonna go ahead and press the MIDI button. And now I am actually running the show from the MIDI button. And as you can see, I didn't move over and select this window. So that is pretty sweet. 
but here is another problem. So it's like we're like almost there, but then there's just like one more catch, and you're like, oh, man. So it's like perfect, but not, right? So watch this. Activate the blue stage wash scene for number one for the first cue. I go ahead and press the mini button. It's going to go to the next, but it shuts off, right? It shuts this screen. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. It shuts this light cue off. So then it turns it back on and I can continue. Now, why does it shut off? Well, let's see if it shouldn't shut off. See, if I highlight over here, space bar, it should be stage wash red with strobes. So let's go back to it. So it's blue and I go and then there's nothing. So what is happening here? Well, basically when you activate the Q button, when you activate the, the go button on the mini board, this scene shuts off, but because we're still activating sequential list, it then turns it back on and it runs it kind of in the background, as you can tell. So the best workaround that I've found to be able to not have to select your song, move over to the live, and then run it from a space bar or your MIDI button for it to work properly. Stop it. The best way is that it just turns it off and on, and then you're ready to go. So what you can do is create two blank macro scenes. Uh, I didn't want to create a, didn't want to, to create a blank scene. So I just created two blank macros. So simply right click, add macro, put them in the one and two slot. So essentially when I activate our song two, let's do it from, so activate song two, I just know on the mini button, I just activate it to turn it off and then it's ready to start my cue by turning it on. And then we're good to go. All right, so with that being said, let's move on to the next uh, new thing in this version. So we're going to look at um, beat, and it's going to be how we're operating the beat. So let's go ahead and let me turn off all of these new cut. Okay. So what I mean by beat, all right, so right here, this is my beat example. It's a white, red, green, blue chase scene, okay? And I simply right clicked speed properties and I have it under beat. So one, one as our step. So every beat, one step's gonna hit. And our trigger is step by step. And now our new option is run from step one. So we're gonna look at both. So before it was only, there was never a trigger option, but it was always step by step. So what I mean by that is that when you have imported beat from VD, v, uh, virtual DJ or any type of imported music via MIDI, that controls the beat in the software, but we're just going to mouse click it for this. As you can see, as I hit the beat, it goes to every step. So red, white, blue, red, green, blue, white, red, green, blue, white, red, green, blue. So it just goes along the step per beat. Now you have the option of speed properties run from step number one. So every time a new beat hits, it's going to reactivate and run it from step one in your scene. So the key would be is to create a two-step scene and you wanna run it from step one. So this is cool in the sense that now you're able to create flashes that go along with the beat like a strobe, and it's always going to be on point because it's running from the step one. So looking at the two-step scene, I've kind of played around with the numbers and the times, um, and this is our best time, I would say. Let's right-click. So our example would be edit, two-step scene. So I use these color band picks minis, 10 milliseconds. And you would make your higher, whatever your max color you want, red, green, blue, strobe, whatever you want. And then on the step two, 50 milliseconds. And step two would be off. Uh, these are all in snap mode. 
Just make sure that's it. So we have on, off. Here we go. So on, off, off is nothing. Okay, so clear. Nope. So we're going to clear this out. Going back to live. The next thing you need to do is make sure you need to right click and pause at the end. So you want this scene to start and then stop. And it's going to pause it at the end. Because if you don't, it's just going to loop like this. And so when you hit the beat, it won't give you that effect that you're wanting to for it to do because it's not pausing. It's just going to be running through that through that step one two one two one two. So by pausing it, it's going to stop after scene two or step two. And so now, because we're going to be running this beat from step one, it then activates it like a strobe or a hit. Or whatever you wanted to make it to be, you can you can have fun with it on all your different types of fixtures. Um, you can get creative with it. So that is what it means. So play around with it, two-step scene, and then just pause the end, and then make sure your speed properties are set to beat. Run from step two, and you're good to go. This also applies to BPM as well. So if you did speed properties. And you want to do BPM, run from the BPM side of things. So it's 80. It's going to do the exact same thing. So you can set it to 135. And now you're going through 135 on the beat. So definitely applies for beat or BPM. All right, that covers the new features in 9.2.23. And until next time.